Howdy folks, Athas here, and welcome back to Tyranny. When last we left off, we were advancing versus Companion Quest. And Kills of Shadow got a level up. Before we do that, we got some new equipment to look at. Weeping Whispers. So, let's... What does it do? Okay, these Whispering Effect Scales with Weeping Whispers are now on. So this is verse. Is this this will be something verse would definitely want. I think it belonged to one of her companions, right? One of her old sisters. I say old. They kind of they they died. They deceased. They were murdered. Or killed. I don't know what the uh, circumstances of the death were. So, what does this do? It, when we crit, we do bleeding for like 12 seconds. That's going to be better than what she already has. So, just, yeah. Just common Scarlet Fury gloves. So, here you go, hey, Verse. Hey, this looks fun. Well, it should be. Alright, so you are maxed out. And I don't want to really like, well, not maxed out, but I don't want to like wait for another level to upgrade this again when there's other stuff that could be helpful to you. The ability cooldown, we get that up another 3%. We're going to just get you, make you beefier, more tanky. I think I'll do that. And we can now do disembowel. Sounds riveting. The attack distance hasn't really been like she's been in the thick of it. Only the only time that she hasn't been. That could help if we're like stuck at a choke point. Um, but if she was the person who was at the front of the choke point, it wouldn't matter. So the only time this would matter is if we have both her and Barrick in the party together, which is very, very rare. In fact, so I think we just go with another ability. Best of slash pierce damage. And leaving the target bleeding. Sounds good to me. Sounds like something she would definitely be into. Okay, so... Got that. We kind of cleaned out this area last time. We're going to move on to what's next. So we can head to River's Break. Or... We can go to Ashfield. Question is, are we ready to confront Blade and Mark again? Especially with who we have in the party. River's Bake is just right there. Ashfield's on the way. So he would know that we are making a detour. I think we already made a detour for that. So do we make a second detour? I don't know, I feel like I'm saying that weird. I feel like I'm making it two separate words. It's detour. <laughs> detour. I feel like I'm emphasizing the E way, way, way too much. But who cares? Let's head to reverse break. Let's, let's finish this. Now, if... The sister to Arissa is, you know, a nice, innocent human being. Then I'll definitely do my best to have Verse not kill her. Sight. Like, as soon as they're seen. The sense of baked bread and vegetable stew mingle in the air. Through the window, you can make out a modest dwelling kept with the kind of order and cleanliness one would expect from a disfavored command tent. Mm, maybe an old vet. Dry grass protrudes haphazardly from the threadbare and sun-bleached tunic hanging on its post. The glower painted on the burlap sack head glares down over a rough grass beard. It bears a passing semblance to a certain archon of secrets. Hmm. So they use a... They use Tunon to, uh... Make scarecrows, huh? Interesting. Let's see if we can head past. He doesn't notice us yet. 
Let's take a bunch of stuff. All right. Let's uh put ourselves in. We can. Good lord. Come on, guys. Not that hard. Let's put kills and shadow in front, please. Thank you. All right. Here we go. An older woman tends to a small but verdant patch of farm, plump gourds and vegetables of vine and root vie for soil and light with a fig tree. Its branches drooping with what passes for abundance in the tears. The farmer notices your approach and takes up her shovel as if it were a spear, favoring her left arm with a wince. Was she injured? Careful, stranger. I'm no easy mark and have little worth your time or blood. A few errant strands of thick gray hair loosened from the band that tames the rest frame her deeply lined face. Hmm. She may be old enough to be my mother, but she holds herself like a warrior trained. Uh, who are you? I'm the woman who tills the soil, mends these walls, and protects them with her blood. I'm supposed to be here. You're the ones who should be announcing themselves. She points to the shovel's edge at you. Feisty. I like this old coot. Reverse grins. Girl, this old coot has split skulls twice as thick as yours. Good hearing, too. <laughs> Alright, uh, we seek Clea. Clea? Clea was my youngest. Why are you asking after her? She lowers the shovel slightly, her eyes widening slightly at the name. Was? Shit, don't tell me we were too late. I'll have you keep a civil tongue in your head, girl, while you're on my land. She jabs her shovel in Versa's direction as if she could seal the Fury's mouth with it. Sorry, ma'am. Verse blinks in surprise at her own words. <laughs> uh, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, what happened to her? She narrows her eyes, her fingers tightening protectively around the shovel. First things first, call me Essa, daughter of Asperia, and this is my homestead, granted me by Queen Vindrian Atlanta in honor of my service. She swings the shovel's head to encompass the small plastered house in the abutting field. Okay, so she's probably not going to be a fan of us. I think way, way back during the conquest, I think we killed her. So... That's an introduction. He got one to match. He points the shovels back towards you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think she'll be very, very unhappy for uh, hearing who we are. Yeah, who I am is of no consequence. I ain't speaking another word to you to give me the courtesy of a name. That's a scowl. It's brandishing her shovel. You're no true tearsman, that's for certain. Even a stalwart longshoreman shows more than the civil tongue. Shows a more civil tongue. Alright, fine. You're not gonna like it. But I'm Zathios, fate binder of Tunon the Adjudicator. Her eyes widen in recognition. What business could possibly bring the Queen Slayer to River's Break? Please, dead, it's going to make it hard to fulfill Orissa's dying wish. We came seeking Cleo. That seems a doomed errand. Yeah, we'll say one. It doesn't say anything about us being deceitful in this. Orissa, dear girl. Dear, stupid, blind, foolish, arrogant girl. Saw Braxer's shrunken frame. How'd it happen? She died in stalwart, aiding the unbroken against the forces of Kairos. It's my fault. I raised those girls on the romance of war, on tales of bloodying the bastard tear and pushing back Azure. How was I to know your armies would come in their lifetimes, that the gates of judgment wouldn't hold, or that you'd stride into the tears of the man of stone, who could step clean over a curtain wall? Even girls like mine couldn't stand against Kairos. There had been nothing like the northern shadow before, able to crush mountains and call earthquakes from a scrap of vellum. There ain't no fight in that, I told them. They didn't listen, damn them. Of all the damn fool things I told them, the only thing they didn't hear was what mattered. She shudders out a sigh. Did you train your daughters? 
Aye, their father were a good man, but more suited to farm work than war. She looks up sharply. Looking for someone to blame, I'd be that person. I trained him up, taught him the falks, the javelin, the spear and shield. And I, they use that knowledge against your precious archons and their armies. Hey, Essa, maybe you like to shut the fuck up now. Her lower lip twitches. Alright, so what do you teach them about the overlord, or... Yeah, what's with all this food? That sold some for rings and without a Kairos damn license, too. Do you admit to violating Kairos' laws in front of a chronicler? Well, young lady, this is going in the permanent record. Plain tree, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, geriatric foyer. You never considered shutting your flapping gums? Verse rubs her brow. Right, anything else you want to tell me, Essa? Naming a child for Kairos is a capital offense, ain't it? I ain't... I imagine naming a pig for Kairos ain't no better. Care to meet Kairos the over pig? He's around back. See what's happening here, don't you, Binder? First size of shoulder sagging. What did you teach them about the Overlord? There's never been a graver threat to all of Tiradus, that Kairos represents the worst of the powers of man or woman, that such an evil must be resisted at all costs, by any means necessary. What? That directly contradicts what you said before. Aye. I changed my tune in my older, softer years, but as they growed up, I poisoned them against Kairos as thoroughly as if I'd carved it upon their hearts. I guess we've come to a decision in this matter. What matter? There's no matter here, Binder. Please tell me you're not going through with this. My sentence left to her grief. I find Essa guilty of fomenting dissent. Death. What will Verse do? I think Verse is... I think Verse actually likes this person. This is not what I expected. I'm happy it's turning out this way, and I hope it turns out this way. I'm hoping that if I pick this, Verse will make the right choice and let her live. Uh, even though S is kind of trying to poke the fires of just kill her. But she doesn't deserve death. She's helping out her community with food. And we still don't know whether or not... Um, we never got to ask the question of whether or not the, others, the other daughter is dead. Alright, this is your dirt dance verse. Pick the tune. Fear and loyalty. Really? Take a step back, blinking rapidly, considering her options. Verse sheaths her weapon and nods. We came here because Arissa, she killed one of my sisters. I always thought I needed to avenge them to make it right because I'd failed them. I'm actually talking to you. It's cleared some stuff up. I guess what I'm saying is I miss my sisters and you miss your daughters. And that's just the way of things. Essa nods numbly, turns, and shuffles toward her squat farmhouse. There you go, Verse. Verse releases a long sigh, bends down, and plucks a round red tomato from the vine. Or tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying things wrong now. Well, not wrong. Just differently. Just to throw people off sides. I don't know. Her thumb slides across its skin, then presses lightly against it, dimpling the vegetable. She tosses it from hand to hand and turns to you. Chris and Clea are dead. What does that mean for your sisters? I'm sure Whispers would have something clever to say about frustrated ambitions. First shakes her head and chuckles darkly. You ever have a friend who almost never speaks? But then every once in a while she slips in the perfect word at the perfect time and it's the only thing you remember. That was three Whispers. She was our wiry, flickering shadow with hair like crow's feathers preferred close-up work that was her name her three knives and the sound of air from a punctured lung it's uh, hard to remember stories about her because she never drew attention and yep her old favorite <laughs> that i remember she'd trick a soldier into gutting his own comrade then open his throat while he was in shock 
beautiful move, and I, I saw her dance it a dozen times. I'm sorry that I asked. <laughs> Whispers knew her histories and letters, knew borders and houses and heraldry. Even knew a few sigils and kept us from bleeding out more than once. She runs a hand over her feathers, except she's wearing the helmet, so she doesn't have any feathers right now. That's fine. She'll, she'll add feathers to it. Whispers and me, we were more than sisters sometimes. Not often, and nothing holding. <sighs> but yeah, she read a body as easy as a scroll. Uh, some uncharacteristic hesitation on your part. I didn't realize you knew me so well as to say what is and isn't like me. She smirks and shakes her head. I enjoy killing, Fatebinder. Doesn't mean I think everyone deserves to die. All right, well, sounds nice. Was nice. All right, let's go. Let's. She bites into the tomato, and a small bead of juice rolls down her chin. All right. Well. wonder how that would have gone if we had... Stance has been upgraded. A stance, what does that mean? Oh, that's like one of her. Hang on. Three whispers, plus 30 dodge. I mean, I think we were using that anyway. Let them think they can hit me. I think it's what we're using anyway, so. All right, time to talk to freaking Blood and Mark. If we don't get stopped along the way, looks good. All right, well, let's see if he's uh, gonna kill us this time. I don't know. I'm I'm very suspicious of him. Very frightened. I feel like we're gonna have to have to fight him at some point. It's not gonna be fun. I think I said it was earlier. I think like he's playing a long game. Dang damn it! Oops. I heard you heard that hitting the mic there. Playing a long game of like setting us up for him being able to take us down and gain more favor. Um, have us do all the hard work of collecting all these artifacts, and then him being sent after us for whatever we do next with all this power because I'm sure Kairos or Tunan will not be in favor of whatever it is we're doing because we're doing it on our own and not of not under anyone's else anyone else's authority other than our own and so sent after us in his eyes kill us Take all that stuff and then use it to his own ends to overthrow Tunan or Kairos or whatever his plans are. We'll see. Alright. The shadows in the wheel stretch and stir, silently shuddering like trees whipping in the wind as Bledenmark emerges from their dark depths. He circles you quietly, slowly, studying you like a strange specimen. Eye is alight with amusement. He clearly takes note of the powerful aura you emanate. That aura looks good on you. The mage bane, I mean... Its iron smells a charred scourge. Hmm. Fascinating bit of work those forge-bound make. With it, you'll have little to fear in the old walls. Mm-hmm. So I wonder... I mean, ev obviously everyone in the party has access and can wear these items. Because we have Verse wearing the helmet. We have Beric wearing the shield. Uh, we have a sword. So, obviously they can go to other people, so they didn't, like, make it exclusive to the main character, those items. So I don't know what that means, right? If it was a thing of, like, where only the main character can wear this stuff, then I understand that. But just having it and having others use it is can also be the same. Because when they talk about it, they talk about it as, like we just said here, looks good on you. 
I guess you could talk to verse, meaning verse, but it seems like that's premeditated to mean that of course you're wearing this. This is an awesome item. But it's like a heavy armor helmet and I'm a light armor dude. At least, you know, I want to wear light armor based on like what my character is with the bow and the, you know, dual wielding, you know, moving fast, dodging, all that fun stuff. And obviously no shield either. I'm just wondering if that is there ever going to come a time where we're going to need to be equipping all that stuff or not. Though, to be absolutely sure, I should probably test it for you. Here, I'll simply pop into the old walls, give it a quick run, and be back before you can say glory to Kairos. So hand it over, kid. Uh... Why would you? Oh, alright. Can I, uh, borrow it? The reason isn't anything you need to concern yourself about. Trust me. Trust his arms over his bandolier. So, do we say no? We have only one wrath with him, but three favor. But still, I don't know what... The, I still don't get what the, like, tiers are. Because I think we were, like, we had more favor than wrath with the Bronze Brotherhood. But they still, like, as soon as we got to town, once our, once we broke off from the Scarlet Chorus, they were just like, take them down. So, I don't know. Maybe you have to max it out. I don't know. That's, that system is still, seems, it's interesting, but I don't know if it's, fully fleshed out. It seems like, you know, this, uh, you know, an attempted thing. There have been things that have been similar. Other games that have had, like, faction type um, things of where, you know, you accrue favor or you tick them off. I'm still not sure what, like, breaking into, like, a tier, being at tier 3 versus tier 1. Apart from some of those bone, some of those abilities that you get, like does that change anything in dialogue? Um, it has changed something a little bit. I mean, it does change things in dialogue. We've seen it with certain factions. We run across someone, you know, disfavored, who's like, "Oh, you were the." But it depends on the person whether they choose like whether they choose the favor or the wrath side. Sometimes. Depends on what they specifically did. So that part I really like about it. So I'm talking it out as... As I'm talking it out right now, I'm seeing some of the benefits of it and some of the cool things about it. But I don't know what it means specifically for Bled Mark for a specific, a specific character like this. Like, if I went all the way to, like, Wrath 5, is it gonna, like, piss him off to the point to where he automatically attacks me as soon as I get to that point? So do we trust him? I can't remember what we did last time. I think the th thing that we did last time is we had him go at us with the shield. We were like, we went at him with the shield to see about the shield's effectiveness. But the fact that he does this, I don't, we don't want to, we really don't want to piss him off. I'm going to say why do you want why do you want to try it? Why does he want to try it? We're getting these things for us, right? So I'm going to say not a chance. I'm not trusting you with this item. You're telling us to get this stuff and it's supposed to be for us to use, not for you to use it. Not a chance. Let's go. You think you're funny. Hmm. But I'd advise you not to test my patience right now. He waits, arms crossed. He scowls and sneers. But when it becomes apparent you're not going to hand the helm over, he sullenly relents. Fine. Be a little shit about it. For the sake of our, let's call it a working relationship, I'll pretend you're still my favorite little protege. 
I guess I can't fault you for acquiring some of my more deplorable traits. Regardless, we have more important matters to consider. What would he want in the old walls? That he would need the helmet. I'll admit, I'm surprised. After such great efforts building trust, you chose, or perhaps cannot help but follow, the solitary path. I've seen what you can do. You are no mere wild talent. You are something far more unusual and more dangerous. The other Archons will fear you, envy you, hate you in almost every manner. And none take this hatred to such sublime depths as the voices of Narat. He has begun the marching chant and mobilized the Scarlet Chorus against you. You should be flattered. <laughs> Only Graven Ash has ever enraged the voices this dearly. Alright, so they're no threat to me. It's coming to me. Saves me the effort. They're marching against us. Vindrian's well would be the most likely place to attack. Absolutely it would. You should return to your lands at once, lest you wish to see the mountain spire overrun with hordesmen. When you have secured your own yard, we will discuss the next steps. Alright, well, see ya. Dissolves into the shadows. So yeah, if the voice of Narant wants to come at me, let him. Alright, do we have missives? Fate of the Forge. Word reached the court that you have dealt with the seditious, uh, seditious mercenaries claiming themselves the mantle or defenders of Lathan's Crossing. You have the gratitude of both myself and the overlord. The disruptions in the settlement long uh, stymied the production of iron goods for the war effort. Forge Master Zedenia personally thanked me for your intervention. Congratulations, Forgebound Guild are a strong and tirelessly, tireless ally to possess. Oh, hey, it's two none. Okay, and that's just a, a thing. It's not something I need to answer back. You've gained as much favor as wrath with him. I just need to be reminded of that every now and then. That we have uh, ticked him off as much as we have uh, helped him out. Alright, let's head up top. I think a long way around. Can't go through here. All right, around the mountain spire. I'm pretty sure they might already be. We might already be under attack. Who do we have to defend? Us. Fatebinder Nunaval. Fatebinder Zathias, you've made new friends. I see. Nunaval gestures lazily toward the panorama in the valley below at the siege camps dotted at the perimeter of your citadel. I'm here at Blade and Mark's behest. Should you fall, I will be in possession of the spire ahead of our enemies. And though I was not instructed to aid you, he didn't specifically forbid me from cleaving a few skulls, should I feel so inclined. He grins, both boisterous and eager. All right, well. Help me out here, dude. There's a Scarlet Chorus guy right here. Is he going to help us out? Truly maddening thing is not that Narant has sent a teeming throng clamoring for your head. But that he has sent yet a slice of the warriors he has amassed at Cacophony. Assuming you survive this day, we'll need to... The massive sculpture rumbles, shaking the masonry of the spire and sending him off balance. What is happening? Is that a good or bad thing? The orb in the center of the resonator spins with the push of some unseen force. Where the structure once exuded warmth, now it gives off a ferocious heat that singes your face the longer you stare into it. The sound like music swarms in the air around the structure, but it's painful and disharmonious to your ears. Disharmonious, sorry. Kills and shadows snaps and snarls in the air, momentarily pained by the pitch of the spire's song. She cracks her spine and pops her shoulders. Shifting uncomfortably on her bare, calloused feet. Do not like spires howling. Sounds like s of slithering scourges of many and more bane. Chasing and biting at beast woman's heels. She tilts her face toward the sky. Dusky snout sniffing side to side. Eyes squeeze shut and her purpled lips peel back in a satisfied smirk. But can smell. Song is making Alpha stronger. Yep. The spire is now fully awake. Its long, dormant currents of energy dance to your presence. What was that? The Fatebinder of War crouches low, steadying himself against the vertigo. But too long glance over the edge. 
An assault against the Spire's foundation? Earthshaker magic, perchance. No, it couldn't be. Right, so the Spire almost has a mind of its own. I see what's going on. The Spire often communicates in visions. Perhaps this is its way of saying it has something to discuss. As the rule of this Spire, I have a mystic link to this place. Give me a moment and I'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah, it has a mind of its own. I should see what's going on. I have heard Rogelis prattle on a great deal about this spire that thrusts as a blade into the sky. And as well to your mastery of its magic, before the enemy comes to claim what is ours, I suggest you explore whatever link you have to this tower. Let us hope to Kairos there is some ward that can be enacted. He shrugs. Else we'll have no defense but to hurl loose stones from Spire's ledge. When I broke the Edict of Fire, I was flooded by an intuition of how it all works. I could try proclaiming it without Kairos' words. Fire resonates my voice. I shout to the valley that I have an Edict from Kairos. That should get them running. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I like idea number two. Let's go with idea number two. They'll realize quick enough we're bluffing, but if we've any luck, some of them will rather run would rather than risk the consequence. He settles you with a scowl, shaking his head with a sigh. I'll ignore your illicit impersonation of our overlord this once. Okay. So we'll have to use the resonator next time. So, till next time, this has been Satias signing off for now. Bye, folks.